Hey everyone, this is Mark with AdTech. In this video, I wanna show you Mac Updater. This is one of my favorite apps that I've found recently. It's a very cool app that helps you keep all of your apps on your Mac up to date. Now, many apps aren't on the App Store, which means you have to go into each of those and manually update them. There's no one central location like there is in the App Store, and Mac Updater aims to solve that with their user interface that's simple and easy to use and allows you to update apps with a single click. So taking a look at the app, this is the main page. Whenever you open it up, it will automatically scan for new app updates. And if any are found, it'll allow you to update them from right here. On the left side, we have our applications. We can see our installed version. We can see the current version. If it's green, it means you're on the current version. If it's red, it means that you are not on the latest version. And instead, it tells you what that is. You can view more information about that update if we click on this I. The reason this app is useful at all is just the convenience of not having to worry about updating an app when you open it. So for example, here we have Audio Hijack. Let's say I wanna go ahead and open that up. I open this and I wanna use it. And we'll see use anyway. And then I just wanna use it and I go to do something and then this pops up right here. A new version is ready to be installed. So you have to read this, which one do I want? If you wanna install and relaunch, you have to wait for that to happen. Even if you wanna use the app right now, we can say don't install and then we can just continue doing our thing. But then your app's not gonna be updated. You can see there's a bug where this is cut off right here. So we're using an older version that is not reliable anymore on this operating system. And if you just go do this, you can just go ahead and update Audio Hijack. It'll go ahead and download that file right there. Most of the times it will install it. Up here we get a notification saying that it's been installed. And now if I go ahead and open that up, we run the latest version, that bug has been fixed and we can use it right away. And if I go ahead and I say check for update, it'll say you are on the latest version. Now the coolest thing is that our license is still active. So it's not going to do anything with that. There are other instances where the app will update in a different manner. There are many different options that it will give you. As you can see for this data recovery, we can do a manual upgrade. If we have a basic app, and most of the time the easiest way is if it says update app, like I just did with Audio Hijack. It apps like Adobe, you have to open the updater it tells you there's an update, but you can't do anything. This will open up the Adobe Application Manager where I can then update it manually. And we can do a manual update right here. This is different than manual upgrade. Upgrade is when there's a big version and you may potentially need to buy a new license for that new version. Or manual update, there's just a small version difference, but it can't download and install that for you. The example I just showed you with Audio Hijack is really great because you click one button, it downloads and it installs and it updates for you right away. But if I have an app like Logitech Options, I can download that update. It'll go ahead and download that, but once it does finish downloading, I will have to continue with the installation process. And we also got a notification here saying update result. The update for the Logitech app, Logitech Options, could not be completed automatically. So we have to go ahead and here we say install, share your data, and then it will go ahead and install that for you right away. While it's doing its thing, let's take a look at a couple of things you may find in here. As you can see, iHeartRadio is 1.1.1. It's on the latest version, but it, it was able to scan and figure out that it is actually discontinued. That's what the DC icon is going to mean. The app is discontinued and is no longer going to be updated. Now right here we're seeing every app on our Mac that is not from the App Store. You can change that up here by showing all apps, hide Mac App Store apps, or hide all unupdated apps. If you only want to see the outdated versions, we can click on this tab right here and it will only show you what needs to be updated. Inside settings, we can do a couple things. We can launch at login. We can choose to show the icon in the dock or in the menu bar. In the menu bar, you can see what apps need to be updated. On our badge apps in list, we have that DC for the discontinued app, which I showed you previously, but we can also enable this if we wanna see apps that are from the Mac App Store 
or ones that are 32-bit, that's actually kind of cool. So you can see that Final Draft 10 is 32-bit right here. It's no longer going to work on newer versions of Mac OS. You won't be able to update that. But if you want to update that, it's an upgrade app is what it says. Because you're going to need to upgrade this, Final Draft 11 may possibly be a paid upgrade that we need a new license for, which is actually a pretty cool thing that it tells you. Under scanning and updating, there's actually a couple of really cool things. We can choose folders to not check for, we can choose folders to check for, and you can even do things such as making backups of the apps you're updating in case you wanna go back to an old version or something happens. Now, one thing that I'm not a big fan of is what the app does with the files it's downloaded. So in our case of the Audio Hijack, it downloaded that update and it installed it. It just transferred that download to our Applications folder. But for apps that have installers, such as Logitech Options that we installed, what does it do with those files? Well, right here, I've got App Cleaner. This is software that used to uninstall your apps on your computer. If we scroll down here, you can see we have 148.3 megabytes that is a random folder, but it's a very big folder. If we open that up, we can actually see it's Logitech Options. So this is the installer for Logitech Options and it's sitting there taking 140 megabytes of space on our computer. Now that isn't a huge deal, but once you get more apps downloaded and installed that have installers like Logitech Options, it's just gonna sit there and pile up. I've gone through settings. I haven't found any option to purge downloaded apps I don't have an option to clear cache anywhere. I don't know if it's gonna automatically dump everything after a certain amount of time, but from what I've seen, it's just gonna sit there under private variables folders, ZB, and just a bunch of random letters. So maybe we'll get rid of it after a week or so. I'm not sure, but as of now, we just have 148 megabytes just sitting there doing nothing and taking up space on our computer. So there you go. It's actually a really cool app. I love this so much. It's really awesome to be able to just download and update apps. It's so fun to just keep clicking the download buttons. And then eventually everything's on the latest version. If you wanna be on the latest version and adopt the newest technology, this is a great way to um, do that. And it's actually pretty cool, reasonably priced. If you wanna check it out, link will be in the description below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, leave it a like and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. This is Mark with Tech, and I will see you in the next one.